It is Veterans Day here in Anthem Community Park. And you might be able to see all those people across the pond back there who are celebrating Veterans Day where they have a special solar event, which only happens once a year at 11 a.m. and 11 minutes thereafter. Unfortunately, way too many people over there to get up close to this solar event. So I thought instead I would tell you as we walk around the park about an unidentifying fly, unidentified flying object that I happened to personally encounter and all of that happened on April 13 of 2016 when I saw a flying object that I will never be able to explain. And I will describe to you how all of that unfolded. Basically, I'm driving along a highway, an interstate highway. If you can imagine between, let's say, Yuma, Arizona and San Diego, Interstate 8 runs along, right along the U.S.-Mexico border. And that's where I was when all this happened. I'm just driving along 85 miles an hour or so, broad daylight. It must have been about maybe 10.30 or 11 o'clock in the a.m., right about the same time we got here right now. And at the time, I was living in my little van. I had a little Transit Connect, and I was just driving all over the country, seeing what there was to see. And I sure saw something that I couldn't believe I would ever see on that day. Not a cloud in the sky. And it just happened. It just came into the windshield, and I just happened to be in that spot at that time. The van had a relatively very, very large windshield on those little transit connects. So, I mean, you can just see, you've got everything out in front of you. That's how I've been living for hmm, about six months now. So that's the report, um, the van report documenting the, the life of a person who decided to take life on the road. And this object first caught my attention in the upper right hand, um, upper right hand corner of this really big windshield I've got in front of me. And you kind of see this whole scene portrayed in the thumbnail that you clicked on for the video. And I noticed in the upper right hand corner some, something kind of metallic and flashing in the sunlight that caught my eye. And this object proceeded to sort of fly right across the top of the windshield so that I saw it as it passed from right to left. And so in terms of like trajectory, it was both um, passing across the windshield but it was also getting bigger as it came it was sort of coming toward me as well. So kind of moving from my right to left, but also as it, as it came towards me or I came toward it, also getting larger. So what did this thing look like? Um, when I created, when I asked ChatGPT to, to sort of recreate this scene for me that you see in the, in the video thumbnail, what I told it was this thing looked like a basically like a baked potato wrapped in aluminum foil. So it was oblong. It was um, sort of like a football, but not as pointy on the ends, more rounded on the ends. And so, yeah, it was basically like, like a big baked potato wrapped in a shiny metallic foil. And I think, I think uh, ChatGPT did a pretty good job of representing what it looked like to me that day. The only thing that it couldn't quite get right was I described this thing sort of like having um, facets on it, which is something that I noticed as I got a better look at it as it came a little closer, that the most distinct thing about this was that it had sort of like 
the facets that you would see on a diamond where it's sort of like little flat surfaces cut into angles going around the metallic outer wrapper around this thing. And the weirdest part of all was that the facets didn't seem to be sort of staying in their position. They sort of seemed to be like morphing and moving around the outside of this oblong thing. And it gave the impression initially, I thought, is it's sort of like it's tumbling through the air, but it wasn't actually tumbling because otherwise you'd notice very clearly, since it's sort of oblong, you would notice if it was actually tumbling. So I sort of concluded that it was just this outer metallic wrapper that had these facets that seemed to sort of be changing and morphing as it moved across the top of my windshield within view. And that was just incredible for me to, to see and realize there's something out there like that, that I'll just never be able to explain or identify. Um, you, might, you might think, well, maybe it's a, a, a blimp or a, some kind of balloon. That was one thing, you know, could it be that? But it's moving way, way too fast. So it was, it was going quite fast through the sky, far faster than any uh, balloon or blimp could go. So then maybe you start thinking, well, maybe it's some kind of space rock or space debris. But it was also the speed was too, too slow for that. So if it's some kind of meteorite or something would have been moving far faster than it was. I mean, I was able to get a, a good enough look at this thing to even to notice, like I said, the, out, the outside of it sort of seemed to be morphing and changing. So that's too slow for a space rock and it was quite quite sizable as well. So we've got some kind of veterans day flyover as we approach when that solar event will take place. So it's it's uh, sizable. It's probably a little bit smaller, perhaps, than like a 737 commercial aircraft. But of course, looked nothing like a typical commercial aircraft. It was, again, it was sort of shaped like a potato. It wasn't a helicopter. And um, so the speed and the size, I mean, if something like that were to impact the ground, we probably would have heard, heard of it, right? Because that was quite a sizable thing. So. I got the impression that it kept on flying and that it didn't sort of crash or, or anything like that. And it's just something that cannot be explained as anything that you or I would normally see or know about. And so that's kind of what happens when you have one of these experiences in my, at least in my experience, is that basically you have this knowledge of something that you saw and you just sort of have to deal with that from here on out, right? And so for me, it wasn't some like huge event in my life that made some big impact because I didn't see any little creatures. I was not abducted. I just saw this thing moving through the sky very clearly. And it's just, it's something where like, like I said, it didn't make some huge impact on my life, but from that day on, I have gone every day knowing in the back of my mind that that thing was real and it's out there somewhere and we'll never be able to know what it was. <laughs> so <laughs> it's kind of like you can't unsee something like that. And when you do see something like that, it's like you have this knowledge that you would otherwise not have that's that that kind of stuff actually is out there and that doesn't mean that it was aliens from another planet but it was either something from someplace off in space or it was something that you and I maybe you know exists in our world but you and I just never are we never encounter it we never experience it except for in some really rare uh, really rare scenario where I just happened to be there at that time 
when that thing was moving through the sky. So in some ways it was a very um, unlikely thing to experience, but also one of those things where it's like, now you know that that's, that thing is out there somewhere and you just, you just know it, right? So maybe you've had some kind of experience like that. If you have, feel free to describe it in the comments. I thought about reporting it to, um, when you're driving along I-8, there's a point where when it comes real close to the border, so close in fact that my cell phone pinged, apparently pinged onto a cell tower in Mexico because my phone said something like, welcome to Mexico. So I took that to mean that, that um, my phone had actually found a tower across the border uh, briefly. And you come to that point where it goes really close to the border and there's like a, a little uh, place where they make you stop or at least slow down and uh, they kind of check vehicles and stuff. And it's still within within the U.S., but you have to actually kind of stop there on I-8. And, and that was right after I saw it that I went through that sort of stopping point. And I thought about reporting it, you know, to the to the border guys that are that run those places. And I just said to myself, you know, this is just this is just something, it's almost like I have to keep it to myself right now until I can digest what just happened. And I thought, you know, they're just going to think I'm some, some nut and make some big joke about, oh, a guy said he saw a metallic thing that was shaped like a potato. <laughs> I, I just was not quite ready to discuss or describe this with anybody. So that's it. That's what it's like to see a UFO. Um, and, not, and just see it, right? It's, it's sort of like for, for the rest of your life, it's with you. You always remember the details of it because it makes such an, an impact at that moment in time. But the reason I titled this, you know, my UFO experience was okay, is just simply because life goes on. You have this knowledge that you wouldn't have otherwise had. You'll always have in your mind each day what happened, but you sort of, I at least don't dwell on it. It didn't make some huge impact in my life. And so thus I say, it was okay. Would I prefer not to have seen it? I don't know. That's a question that sometimes I ask myself. Would I rather just not have this certain knowledge that this thing is out there because it does sort of just a little bit tweak how you interpret the world around you from that point on, knowing that that's out there. So I can't really answer that question with a big yes or no, but I think I'd probably say, I'm glad I saw it. It was something that was just such a stunning thing to see. Like I said, I wasn't even ready to really talk about it uh, for at least probably a day or two afterwards when I, you know, you just kind of digest it, right? And that's it. That was my experience, which was okay when I saw a UFO that one day, April 13 of 2016. So from Anthem Community Park, a very busy place today on Veterans Day, we will wind things down by saying, first of all, thanks to the veterans. And I particularly want to sort of uh, maybe call out veterans who served during the Cold War and did a lot of uh, important work during those years, keeping things from flying off the rails. Did a good job of uh, keeping everything under control. So the prime solar event has now passed. We are able to actually get up close to the structure itself. You can see how the beams of the sun would shine through each of these columns and perfectly illuminate this circle at exactly 11 11 a.m. on November 11 and you can see it's no longer illuminated but this is what the structure looks like on Veterans Day of 2024.